Tonight, the story of a tyrant, possibly the worst in the world. He's vicious, he's venal, and he's robbing his country blind. His country is an African hellhole called Equatorial Guinea, and no one would have ever heard or cared about it if they hadn't discovered vast oil deposits just offshore. So much oil, in fact, that at the rate this tiny country is growing, in 10 years, it could be the richest in the world. Now, the trouble is, most of the oil money is being pumped directly into the president's pocket. He's living like a king while his people starve. The two bob tin pot tyrant who runs this tiny African backwater gets around with an entourage worthy of a superpower. And he is just about the most horrible despot in the world today. President Teodoro Obiang Nguema Mbisogo. His people are amongst the poorest on earth and he's amongst the richest. This is one bad place. It's had one of the most appalling human rights records probably in the world. Regular torture, regular extrajudicial uh, killings. Until people found oil, nobody was really talking about Equatorial Guinea. The oil here is attractive because it's non-Arab, non-OPEC, non-Muslim, and the rigs are well out of reach of the pesky natives. The main island of this tiny nation is in what detractors call the armpit of Africa. A small Australian company, Rock Oil, is drilling here, but it's mostly American giants, particularly Exxon Mobil. To begin with, they gave Equatorial Guinea, the oil's owners, just 12% of the oil revenues. The norm is more like 60% according to Alex Vines, an African specialist with the Royal Institute of International Affairs. Initially, the oil companies gave Equatorial Guinea a really bad deal. They took advantage of him. Certainly to start with. The, the government of Equatorial Guinea had not a clue what it was dealing with at the time. The main square in the capital is a quaint throwback to Spanish colonial times. Elsewhere, the city is mostly a slum, with little running water and essentially no sewerage. The government stopped us filming here, but we managed these shots from our hotel window. Whilst the oil fires flicker on the horizon at night, students, with no electricity at home, study under the streetlights that illuminate the drive to the presidential palace. It's a very bad, evil government. And Exxon, I think, to a shame, is uh, in bed with them. Frank Ruddy is doubly qualified. He was once the American ambassador to Equatorial Guinea and once a lawyer for Exxon. The shameful part is that uh, you have uh, a great company like Exxon, Mobil, uh, which is uh, tied in with this very corrupt government. The president treats the Treasury as his own uh, patrimony. And so to do business with somebody like that and to uh, basically, literally feed his coffers, uh, I think it's shameful. The president and his family are frequently overseas. First son, Teodoro Jr., is partial to Paris and its finest hotels. Incredibly, he once allowed French television to tag along on a shopping spree. But a Bentley can be hard work in Paris traffic. A fashion house closed its doors to give Junior exclusive access to the merchandise. But whilst their Paris ambassador um, did his job. Teodoro bought 30 suits that day, browsed for a new watch, and then took the Lamborghini down the Champs Elysees to get some CDs. Would it be churlish to suggest that maybe it's excesses like this that cause so little to be spent in the slums back home? 
The actual expenditure on health and education has significantly declined in the last five years. And think of it, the last five years are when the oil wealth has really been kicking in. So although the country is getting richer, actually the people are getting poorer. The money is going elsewhere. It's not going to the benefit of the people. The white man's hotel in the capital has one of the nation's two swimming pools. Neither contains water. Pity, really, because here we found Eric Musumbani, Eric the eel. Remember him? The slowest swimmer at the Sydney Olympics and now training for Athens. Well, how do you do training if the pools haven't got water? OK, I was in South Africa and in Angana. That way I have been training. But now I have to move to Spain to train. Here I can do it. At the same hotel, we ran into some of ExxonMobil's men relaxing after a stint on the rigs. Perhaps being well-oiled blurs the sight of the squalor that's all around. This country's dirt poor. Where's all the money going? We don't control where the money goes. We're just out here to do a job. I was uh, having dinner at a fish restaurant an hour or so after talking to those rig workers when, out of the blue, the Equatorial Guinean Information Minister shows up and says, get out of the country. Your visa has been revoked. And he added for good measure, if you go quietly, then nobody will be thrown into jail. So I think, understandably, we then quietly made our way here to Madrid in Spain. How many times have you been to jail? Four times. Have you been to jail? Several times. The rat-infested Black Beach jail back in the capital is where President Obiang locks up his opponents. When he seized power from his uncle 25 years ago, he kept him here for a couple of days and then had him executed. No wonder many in opposition to Obiang today have fled here, Madrid, Spain, the former colonial power. The way Obiang is taking all the country, including natural resources, he genuinely believes that this country belongs to him. In your democracy, sir, in the late 90s... The president also believes he's sharing those resources. At least that's what he told Bob Simon from CBS 60 Minutes in an interview last year. The oil has been for us like manna that the Jews ate in the desert. We have to follow the rules to make sure the manna reaches all the people in Equatorial Guinea. The oil companies make sure the manna reaches at least as far as him. In America, it's red carpet treatment for the president all the way. And I remember the president has a very fine collection of scotch whistle. Obiang was even a guest at this function when Big Oil paraded its biggest and most powerful friend. The president of the United States, George Bush. Do you have any qualms about doing business there? It's a matter of you, you have to. Mr. Stephen Hayes runs America's Corporate Council on Africa, the council lobbies for American oil. I mean, is there any depth to which you will not sink? I mean, would you uh, do business with this man, Obiang, no matter how corrupt he is? I, I think that at some point, again, um, that's, that's, a, that's a good question. Is, is there any level at which any oil company in the world wouldn't uh, do business with where, where there's that much oil? Um, I don't know. Your position is that we shouldn't be taking oil from Equatorial Guinea. No, sir. No, no. My, no, my, no, no. My, it my, it my, is that no. position well, because there's, there's no other choice. Well, let me tell you my position, sir. Mm -hmm. My position is that there should be some morality in this mm -hmm. and there should be a level below which you won't sink. And you've sunk to unbelievable depths in dealing with such a corrupt and cruel dictator as Obiang. Well, I don't, uh, I don't uh, agree with it. What, the cruel bit or the corrupt bit? No, I don't. I certainly, I don't. I don't. I don't agree that American companies are are not following the fair the Fair uh, Trade Practices Act. It turns out President Obiang does lots and lots of business in Washington, oil business, and private business. The ritzy part of the most important city in the world, Washington, is. Um, well, very ritzy, and when it comes to a good address, there are a few better places than here, DuPont Circle. 
on this circle, there's one particularly interesting building, the DuPont Circle branch of Riggs Bank. Never heard of it? Well, if you're a member of the Saudi royal family, you would have, because many of them do their private banking here, as does President Obiang. Obiang controls in excess of 60 accounts at this bank, including the one where oil companies deposit royalty payments. In some accounts, the balances run to hundreds of millions of dollars. In such circumstances, I guess it's understandable that the president would equip himself with a mansion like this just outside Washington. But it's a silly president who forgets to lock the front gate. Hello. Good morning. Is President Obiang in, please? Hello, how do you do? A caretaker eventually emerged from a garage, so I got a glimpse of the presidential fleet. And since the president was not in when I dropped by, the same caretaker very kindly arranged for me to speak with a government representative on the phone. Who is this? Yes, um, my friend. Your friend? Yeah. What's your friend's name? You can't tell her over here. Oh, you're the ambassador. Oh, I see. You're the president's cousin. Oh, goodness gracious me. Well, Mr. Ambassador, tell me, how much money has the president got in his Riggs bank account at the moment? The FBI is trying to trace cash movements in and out of that account. So, Mr. Ambassador, are you still there? And whether it's the oil companies making the Thank in you. cash payments. Bye-bye. President Obiang and his family must enjoy the lifestyles of the rich and famous. Otherwise, why would he have another mansion just down the road? And across the continent, another. Los Angeles' luxurious Beverly Hills area is home for Teodoro Jr. Remember him? He's the son who likes the fast cars and fancy suits. Swimming pools, movie stars, and an African prince. Where is the owner of the property? This is the African prince. An African prince? Yeah. Back home in Equatorial Guinea's slums, last year the economy grew a massive 60%. It is the fastest growing economy on earth. Near to none of the country's half million people see a brass razu from this. Why don't you do the right thing? Get out of Equatorial Guinea, turn your back on this corrupt dictator. Let's assume that every oil company, a US oil company, gets out. How fast do you think it would be before the French and other international oil companies are in there? A second. So what really changes in Equatorial Guinea? See, that's it. It is such a tiny place. It should be another Kuwait. If everyone did the right thing, yes, and the fact is that almost no one is doing exactly the right thing. By associating with this murderous criminal tyrant, we in the West are party to a disgrace and contributing to a disaster in the making. Hello, I'm Tom Steinford. Thanks for watching 60 Minutes Australia. Subscribe to our channel now for brand new stories and exclusive clips every week. And don't miss out on our Extra Minutes segments and full episodes of 60 Minutes on 9now.com.au as well as the 9now app.